no wombats were harmed in the resulting explosion. In other news, famous Arctic explorer Robert Perry has finally reached the North Pole. We have our reporter in the field, Nick Magnet, on assignment there. How's it going, Nick? Yes, Jordan, it is very cold up here. And there's a lot of walruses. And there's Eskimos, too. And they're very liberal with their offers of whale blubber. It's quite unfortunate. I'm depressed. <laughs> Suck it up, you baby. They don't pay me nearly enough to do this job. Anyway, we've just arrived here in the Arctic with a multitude of men, dogs, and supplies. Peary arrived here in the same fashion April 6, 1909. And our correspondent Emily Andrews has an interview with him in his New York home. Robert E. Perry was born on May 6, 1865, to parents Charles Nutter Perry and Mary Webster Wiley Perry in the town of Creston, Pennsylvania. At the age of two, both his parents fell ill, and as a result, he lost his father. As a child, he was a loner and conditioned himself for his future, be it knowingly or unknowingly, by taking 25-mile hikes weekly, be it alone or with friends. Speculation has been given that this nature originates from the fact that he was raised with no father. In 1877, he graduated from Bowden College, located in Maine, and at age 25, joined the Navy Corps of Civil Engineers at the rank of lieutenant. His first ever expedition was aided by Associate Matthew Henson in 1886, traveling to Greenland, which he returned to six years later to prove it was an island. In later trips to Greenland, he made the discovery of three of the world's largest meteorites. In total, he made three expeditions to the Pole, his third expedition being a success, though his first two each set world records in how close he got. During the first expedition, he returned after four years of fruitless search. His second expedition, he was forced to return home due to the fact that he broke both his legs. Though in that bedridden state, he did successfully direct the construction of a base camp before returning home. And as for the story of his third attempt, he has yet to tell us. So Perry, how was it to finally reach the North Pole? The Pole at last! The prize of three centuries, my ambition for 23 years, and it's all mine! And I did have some other people with me there, I think. And who were those men? Uta, Engwe, Siglu, and Ukwe. And Matthew Henson, he was there too. I call him Maddie. He's a very nice man. Can you describe your trip, sir? Well, we left New York City around the 6th of July, 1908. We went up to Indian Harbor, I believe, on September the 7th of 1909. And then we went through the Davis Strait. We passed a couple of capes, York, Shabin. We wintered in Shabin because Arctic isn't a nice place in the winter, obviously, because it's always winter, and then it's uber winter. And then once we reached the ice, we utilized the native means of transportation, which is dogs attached to sleds. It's very cutting edge. And we went across the ice until we reached the pole, which should have been the pole, at least. It's the pole. Next question. Wait, so you're not even sure you reached the pole? Well, some of you may have heard of Mr. Frederick Cook, who also said that he reached it last year. And I want to tell you, all of you there at home, he's not right. The pole is mine, claimed by me. I was the first one there. He's lying. Damn it. So tell me a little bit more about Matthew Henson. Ah, uh, Maddie, he's a, he's a good guy. I met him in Nicaragua. I was buying some supplies for my first expedition in the Navy. I was really impressed by his knowledge of ships and ship travel. I thought he'd be pretty useful, and he's been with me ever since. How did you prepare for your trip? I've been preparing for this for a long time. Uh, I was the first one to look at Eskimos and dog sledding. That's what they call it. Um, I went up through Greenland on a dog sled. I 
explored up there in the Arctic and plattered out my course. Uh, the Inuits have some good tricks up their sleeves up there. They're cool people. Very cool. I left a piece of myself up there in the pool. And what do you mean by that? I don't got no toes. Is that the truth? I'm afraid I just lost my job. Anyway, back to you, Jordan. Well, that was a great interview, Miss Andrews. Yes, it was. Mr. Perry was a very toeless individual. Yes, he is. Well, then, it's been nice seeing you all again tonight. And incendiary wombats, news 11.